Okay guys, today we are going to be talking about which pilot survival knife should you choose and if you were in or found yourself in that ordeal, which one I think would come out on top. Now, I was doing some thinking not so long ago, as per usual with this channel, and I got to thinking, you know, the Gerber LMF2 is pitched or angled as a kind of pilot or aircraft kind of pilot or aircraft uh, survival knife. It is orientated towards those people that work around um, aircraft, avionics, and uh, aviation as a whole in the military. And that thought process got me thinking that I actually own another knife that has a similar type of background and is actually Sweden's choice for their pilot survival knife and that is the Falkneven F1. So that got me thinking about if I had to choose if I was in that particular role, though I certainly wish I was certainly wish no one ends up in that role. If I had to choose a survival knife for a vehicle for an aircraft specifically, these are two offerings that are very different and I think reasonable enough to compare with each other. Now Without any further ado, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Instagram and Patreon. The support is always heavily appreciated. Now, let's talk about the Falkneven F1 versus the Gerber LMF2. Okay, so let's talk about the size difference. The size difference between these two is probably one of the most interesting things to talk about, in my opinion. So on the surface, when you take the LMF2 and put it up against the Falkneven F1, you immediately say that the, the Gerber LMF2 is going to be much larger, and it comes in at an overall size of right around 10 inches, whereas the Falkneven F1 comes in at about eight and a half inches. However, if you do just a little bit of thinking or a little bit of digging, you'll soon notice that when it comes to the actual handle size, like the portion where your hand is grasping on both of these knives, it's actually reasonably similar. And you can see that the LMF, you know, has this very large striking pommel, which adds to the handle size or handle length, but doesn't really contribute in any meaningful way. It's not like you can choke back onto it to get extra leverage for chopping. And it's not like you can really, you know, do anything useful with that extra, you know, inch and a half that's on the back, or maybe it's about an inch that protrudes from the back. So when you think about it and you actually compare both of them in hand, they're actually both about reasonably the same size. So when it comes to handle length, they're reasonably similar, surprisingly. In addition to that too, another thing that some might note is the blade length. And this is true, the blade length is certainly longer on the Gerber, or at least it initially appears. And the reason why I wanna say initially appears is because these serrations that are on the Gerber LMF2 will invariably dull. And being that the only field sharpener that you have included on the sheath is only going to sharpen the plain side of the combo edge, realistically, when you actually look at it, the plain edge on both of these, uh, if you actually compare plain edge to plain edge, the Falkneven F1 does have a longer blade. So while that one might be reaching a little bit, and of course, when it comes to things like batoning, where you don't necessarily need a specifically sharpened edge to do the job or the task, there might be a leg up a little bit for the Gerber, but by and large, when it comes to it, they're actually pretty darn similar. Okay, so let's talk about overall durability and performance when it comes to survival. Now, before we get into, like I said, some of the more argu arguable and kind of opinionated stuff, I wanna stick reasonably factual and just roll in some testing footage. Now, this was done on two different days, but I have tested both of these blades and this unfortunately, and unfortunately the Gerber really has not seemed to hold up very well. As I'll roll in some footage of testing, you guys can see how this handle is pretty thoroughly damaged. And in addition to that, to this little end cap, this little pommel, it's hard to exactly show in the video footage, but this pommel definitely wiggles back and forth. And because of the plastic housing for the Gerber LMF2, it definitely moves back and forth within this plastic housing. And hopefully you guys can kind of see 
Maybe you can hear it a little bit, but it does move up, down, and left and right in its plastic housing. And you can really feel that when you hold this knife. In addition to that too, both of these knives feature rubberized handles, but the rubber on the Gerber seems to be much, much cheaper. As you can see that once again, it's quite literally falling apart in certain areas. And uh, overall just does not really look like it's holding itself together very well. The 420HC semi stainless steel that is used by the Gerber LMF2 is very much showing its use and uh, definitely has chipping and uh, damage to the edge. Now granted this blade has never touched any rocks, it's never come into contact with anything that would generally cause chipping. Like I said, I have hard used it and batoned it, you know, done feather sticks and such stuff but that's not generally or typically stuff that you would expect to see uh, edge damage like this with. Now, like I said, cool thing is the sheath, it does have a sharpener, so you could sharpen the plain edge portion of this blade like you would probably need to. Okay, so that's how the LMF2 fared. Let's talk about how the Falcon even F1 fared. Now, granted, like I said, this blade does have a smaller overall blade length so it has not been able to be used or batoned on as large pieces of wood though i did try a fairly equal comparison with that piece of green birch that i showed uh, just beating the heck out of both of these blades so there is definitely some hard use and neither blade obviously made it through that they're both a little bit too small but uh, they both in fairness, they both held up just fine to that or they didn't get any more damage. Like the LMF2 didn't get any more damage than it already was. Now, one thing that I was actually a little bit surprised about, but I wanted to be apples to apples with this test, is that I stood on and tried to break the tip of both of these knives specifically. And as my test and other tests on YouTube uh, confirm, even though the tip on the Falcon Even F1, which hopefully you guys can see here, is reasonably narrow, you know, reasonably uh, thin. It actually holds up remarkably well to uh, pressure, lateral pressure, um, and torque on it. So while I'm not saying that you could use this as a fully fledged pry bar or that it would hold up to anything, it is surprisingly tougher than you might actually give it credit. Now, like I said, both of these knives do feature um, rubberized handles, so that is a pretty similar comparison. But one thing that I do really enjoy about the Falkneven uh, lineup, but especially the F1 in this case, is the fact that you do see a true full tang. So with your Gerber LMF2 here, this is about a three quarter tang. And uh, this part of course is separate from the tang, this uh, little steel kind of glass breaker, polycarbonate breaker, whatever you want to do with it. Um, that part is a separate portion of the tang. It is not connected in any way, shape or form. So once again, that explains why it has rock to it and why it kind of got damaged in testing because it is an independent piece uh, aside from the actual tank of the blade so it doesn't have as much reinforcement now like i said of course the tang of the falcon even is present on the end it's not quite sharpened or you know shaped in any way to really effectively break glass or polycarbonate i mean if you did smack something with it hard enough it might work it is still a technical piece of hardened steel that you're trying to strike with so it could work in those circumstances. However, it is not necessarily designed with that intent in mind. That being said, um, this knife has shown me amazing resilience and I actually really have, uh, I'm actually really glad I did this video because I wasn't exactly sure how tough the Falcon even F1 was to start off with. I wasn't sure if this was really going to be a seriously venerable knife in tough circumstances or conditions, but I am happy to see that actually quite, you know, the opposite. This is actually really quite a stout blade. Now, let's talk about some of the pros for the Gerber. Now, luckily, not all is bad with the Gerber. Now, as far as the blade goes, I'm not a very large fan of the blade. I think that the blade overall is definitely um, 
I think the Falkneven is definitely winning as far as the blade and the knife goes. Uh, the Falkneven is sharper. It is more durable. Of course, there's less parts to it because this is a fully rubberized handle using, I believe, Thermarun, but I could be wrong on that one. But it is a fully rubberized handle, so there's no plastic insert, you know, wrapped or there's no rubber wrapped around a plastic insert wrapped around a tang. And that's kind of the failing point for the LMF2. Though I will say the biggest winning portion for the LMF2 has to be the sheath. And whether we're talking about the leather or plastic sheaths by Falkneven, I will say that's probably the biggest downside to the Falkneven line. Now, I'm not necessarily gonna say that I'm enthusiastic about the gimmicky sharpener. I think that the sharpener is kind of its own little gimmick, not really a fan of that part. But what I do like about the sheath is that one, it is ambidextrous, so you can put it in either way. The other thing I like, of course, is the ways that you can rig it. Of course, this comes with a uh, kind of molly back plate or kind of uh, ballistic nylon backing to it. So you can, you know, wear it on your belt, you can put it on a backpack, you know, you can do what you need to do, rig it up through molly, whatever. Um, but one thing I do like is that you can take all that off and you still have this really nice, actually really well thought out, kind of rubberized plastic sheath uh, core that you could potentially mount if you wanted to do things like scout style, baldric rigs, this uh, leaves it open for quite a few different multi-mount capabilities. Comparing that with this one, it, for example, is the leather sheath, but I also have the Zytel sheath for several of my other Falknevens. So uh, I, I do have both of them, but both are rather basic and rather, you know, just traditional. And that's not necessarily a problem, but unfortunately, like you could see with the leather sheath, there's really no mounting option for, you know, wanting to strap it to a backpack or wanting to run it, you know, in a scout style. So unfortunately, I'd say that's probably the biggest crux to the Falcon even as a whole is that it really does lack a good mount or sheath system. Uh, the knife itself though is very squared away. And of course, when it comes down to it, you can always buy a Kydex sheath. And that's what actually many people do with the F1s themselves. Other things to note or other things that I think are worth noting, both of these blades, though I didn't show it here in this video, both of these blades are capable of striking ferro rods off the back of the, their spines. I will say the Falknevens are sharpened a little bit better or at least come to more of a edge for striking ferro rods. So hypothetically, so hypothetically these so hypothetically, these should perform better or Falkneven, like the Falkneven F1 should perform a little bit better, but ultimately both will throw a reliable spark off the spine. Lastly, I will note is coatings versus lack of coating. Uh, the Falkneven, one thing that's nice about it is it is made out of a laminated VG10. And uh, this one, so that means that it is a stainless steel and laminated with a VG10, which is less stainless than the uh, so the core steel is VG10, which is less uh, stainless than the steel that's wrapped around it, but it still is ultimately a very stainless steel. And that's why you don't see a coating on this blade because it's not necessary to prevent it from rusting. Now, on the other hand, we have 420 high carbon. Now this is a st semi stainless steel. And I do wanna note that uh, the 420 HC is not going to necessarily rust on you instantly. It's not gonna perform like a, like a high carbon steel that, um, so it's not gonna perform like a high carbon steel, something along the lines of like 1095 or 1085. This will be fairly rust resistant, but it is nowhere near a full on proper stainless steel. It will rust if you do not care for it. So do keep that in mind. It's not one of those steels that will instantly rust or instantly oxidize, but it is not the most bulletproof either. So I would say the VG10 in the Falkneven F1 will definitely perform much better. 
lastly is price and that was the other half of what really started this whole kind of me digging into the lmf2 versus the falcon even f1 and that is that largely these knives shared the exact same price at least at the time of filming this video of course things may change but the gerber lmf2 is going for about 120 dollars to 110 dollars the falcon even f1 is going for about 110 to 130 dollars so the falcon even might be just a little bit more expensive but realistically when we're talking about you know knives that are over 100 dollars 10 dollars difference doesn't make a huge percentage change um ultimately they're reasonably the same price so all that being said if i was in this particular type of situation you know uh, I would definitely consider the Falcon even F1 over the LMF2. And I know a lot of people bring this up or bring up this conversation that, you know, the LMF2 performs the way it is or it is the way that it is, you know, in design and shape and features because it's designed to perform or to be a... Uh, an aircraft survival knife and I just thought that I would do this video because there are other knives such as the Falcon even F1 in a very similar price point that are also designed and adopted and carried by military forces you know by pilots as a survival dedicated survival knife that are much better knives in my opinion so oftentimes when I'm hard on things like the Gerber it's not simply that I have some vendetta against them I'm trying to show you guys and make a point or a case uh, that really you know if you want to go out and you want to spend your 120 dollars on a gerber lmf2 you can totally do that and uh, i won't be offended at all i don't really care what you do with your money but i did want to at least make a video saying hey you know if this is the knife that you're considering for these tasks purposes goals objectives then this is also another knife in the same price range with the same tasks goals objectives outlined that at least in my opinions i can actually recommend for me once again seeing the level of damage that this lmf2 has sustained you know you can't make this stuff up you can't lie like i'm not uh, trying to lie to you guys here you can physically see the damage that the lmf2 has sustained from hard use and you can physically see the lack of damage that the falcon even f1 has sustained from hard use so the proof's in the pudding you know if you do want to go out and buy a clearly inferior knife you are more than welcome to do that but don't say that you weren't at minimum warned that there are better blades out there Okay, guys, that's all I really have to say in this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. As always, God bless, and I'm out.